Hello, my name is Tabitha Davies. I am a certified professional dog trainer and associate certified dog behavior consultant and fear free certified. And I started the reactive and aggressive dog community group on Facebook. Um, I am going to go over muzzle basics. Um, there's portions of this where I will present, discuss certain things, add it to here. And then there's a bunch of sections for you guys to read. I am not going to narrate that because I don't like my voice enough and I highly doubt anybody else wants to listen to me ramble on what they can read off of a screen. Um, you get me in my no makeup purple hair glory. And we are going to start with muzzle one on one sizing, selecting and conditioning. So face mask muzzles. Um, these are something that covers the entire face of the dog. They generally look really weird. And they're usually mesh because they need to be very breathable because these dogs have no muzzles for a basket muzzle to anchor onto or a fabric muzzle to anchor onto. They don't really prevent bites um, as well because of the structure of the muzzle. However, they can be beneficial in helping kind of dissuade a lot of them. Um, and give the handler a little bit more time. You're commonly going to see those with dogs when they need to be handled um, and they're not okay with it. Uh, it's not often something that you walk your dog around in if you're dealing with any sort of reactivity or aggression. Basket or wire muzzles. So no muzzle is 100% uh, restriction free. So a properly fitting basket muzzle, um, also called wire muzzles uh, or cage muzzles, um, reduce panting ability, but only by about 30%. They, they still retain 70% of their panting ability, which means that they can cool and self-regulate their heat. They can eat, they can drink, they can bark, they can growl, they can try to bite, but they're not going to be able to put their, their teeth on your skin as well. They are not considered bite proof. And that is because of the way that the basket muzzle is opened. And depending on which one that you purchase, you're going to have an easier time um, with the dogs being able to push through that muzzle and make contact. So you want to make sure that the one that you purchase fits your dog appropriately, is very comfortable for your, your dog, um, and is fit to them. And the ones that people don't commonly know about are the bite proof muzzles. There's really only three companies that provide them um, that I am aware of. They're preferred with dogs that have a bite history because they can't bite. So a basket muzzle can pretty much bring your bite down to something that's like a skin pinch or maybe getting a tooth out, but not being able to bite bite, but a bite proof muzzle, they cannot put their teeth on someone. It's structurally made so that even if they're biting inside their muzzle, they're not able to get a person's skin or clothing to do anything with. It reduces the panting from about 30 to 40%. So they're between 60 and 70%. Um, so understanding your dog's baseline respiratory and baseline um, Body temperature as well as working respiratory and working body temperature are going to be really key with that type of muzzle because you want to make sure that you're able to assess them um, when you're out doing things and making sure that they're not overheating because, you know, again, we restrict that natural ability for them to pant and regulate their, their body heat. Um, really should be done with basket and wire muzzles as well. Not usually something that's as commonly seen with them as, as the bite-proof muzzles. Um, commonly seen on working dogs. Uh, they're difficult for training if you're going to be using food, unless you can find a way to deposit through, a, you know, like canned cheese up through one of the little holes or really, really tiny little trees that you can kind of shove in there. Um, and the dog has to be able to get it while it's in there. So it can, it can be a little difficult if you're using food. However, if you're using physical contact or premax principle for different activities, um, things like that, you're going to find a lot of benefit in those muzzles. I always recommend... Um, working your way up from a basket muzzle, doing a lot of training at a very large distance with a basket muzzle, and then using a bite proof. And it, it means that when you're done training, you need to go from point A to point B, like to your vehicle, um, through a less secured area, that you switch out to that bite proof muzzle, um, or you know just give that ability to prevent any sort of incident occurring while you can't control the environment as much. Now we have sizing your muzzle. <laughs> My face is in the way. Um, so I'm going to jump off here in just a second so that you guys can actually um, read the rest of this. But these are some common ways that you're going to be asked to measure depending on the manufacturer. Every manufacturer uh, varies depending on the style of muzzle um, and what type of muzzle that you're purchasing. Jaco can be the exception to this rule. Um, I have found their sizing online to be pretty you know, coherent and um, matching what you're getting. However, I know some people have gone by their sizes and gotten something that just absolutely does not fit their dog. So 
Um, it's really important to understand if you're supposed to be measuring in inches or centimeters, you need to ask them exactly how they want you to measure. Um, they're going to give you diagrams that show you all the ways you need to do it. If you're ordering from Bumas, which I love, um, you're going to be asked to show the measuring tape and photograph very clearly showing from point A to point B uh, with the measuring tape on your dog. It does require at least two people um, to do those types of measurements for companies that require sentiment. And they do that because they're custom made. Um, they don't do returns. You're not buying something that's a select size. And if you know that your dog has a bite history, um, you know that a muzzle is something that your dog, you know, you have a three-year-old dog and you're likely gonna have this muzzle for routine things for years to come, then you are looking at wanting to make that decent investment. So, you know, $200 might not be a bad idea versus 50 that you might have to, um, you know, replace as your dog grows or, replace as it gets wear and tear because um, boomers are, are biothane so they're made a lot differently and we'll go into that in a minute so i'm going to try to figure out how to move my face off of here there we go so you can see the rest of it um the manufacturer will tell you what you need and if specific photos need to be taken so if you need to take a screenshot of that or save it or whatever you need to do to put your notes in you're good And now we have conditioning and the basics of conditioning are pretty simple. Um, it's a lot to read. Um, you need to make sure that you go really, really, really slow. If you push this, you will wreck it for you and your dog. So you need to take your cues from your dog. You need to go at your dog's pace. I don't care what you have going on that requires you to do it, unless it's something where you know you're gonna have an emergency vet visit or an urgent vet visit, that's different. Um, it might be something that you're gonna wanna ask for medication for. Um, heavy duty medication for so that your dog can be examined without a whole bunch of uh, fear, anxiety, and stress. Because pushing this and doing it wrong means that you don't get to really do it over again. Um, you can, but your your work is like almost tripled. So just start off from the beginning the right way, take it slow, take your dog's cues um, so you don't have to create a bigger mess for yourself.